Welcome to another edition of Let's Ride with Chris Harris Jr. on the Believe Network. I am Patrick Coyote. I am, of course, one of your two hosts of this program. Joining me, as always, is former Denver Bronco Super Bowl 50 champion, undrafted all timer Chris Harris Jr. Chris, good to see you, man. It's been a while. It's good to be back. Yes, How you doing? Oh, doing good, man. Happy to be back. And, you know, it's a lot of, you know, I think the, the most exciting thing coming up is the draft. You know, it's the only yeah. thing you see online or on TV, you know, is everybody getting ready for the draft, man. So I'm excited for it. It's draft season, man. This is our first draft season together. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I mean, you're, you know, you got the, you got the former player aspect. Uh, I, yeah. I bring the fan aspect, but man, draft season is one of my favorite times of the year. Uh, it's it's yeah. what I live for year in, year out with college football. And I'm glad that we get to share this experience now uh, because this is this is my bread and butter, man. This is awesome. Uh, we're going to talk right. about the draft, the news, the all the pro days that we're seeing, the quarterbacks, the performances. We're going to get Chris's uh, takes on some of these absurd quarterback throws at the pro days. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the players that the Broncos have signed recently, as well as some of the talk surrounding the Broncos draft plans, something that Sean Payton kind of talked about in the coaches, the coaches meetings uh, last week. But before we get into all that, we have a message from our sponsors. The NCAA basketball tournaments are here. Both the men and women are fully in swing. Lots of upsets, lots of big plays. I know K Caitlin Clark is trying to ball out for the Hawkeyes, and it's so fun to watch. Uh, it's even more fun to watch when you've got a little bit of side action uh, going on. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contest out there and odds, lines, and information on every game and every round right up to the national championship games. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices and even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get in on all the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. And Chris, where we're going to start is with the newest member of the Denver Broncos, and that would be wide receiver Josh Reynolds, who comes over yeah. from the, the Detroit Lions, um, signed a two year deal worth up to 14 million. Chris, uh, do you like this signing for the Broncos? Do you think this yeah. is a good addition? Yeah, only thing I think it's a good addition because he's a veteran guy. He knows um, his role. He knows he knows what to do in in, in systems, right? He's played in this type system, kind of. You know, it's not the same as Sean McVay, but it's still similar. You know, he's yeah. kind of been in, in the same system. You know, with Jared Goff. You know, it's kind of been following him, so he, he'll know what to do. Um, only, my question is, is he's similar to Tim Patrick, you know, he's, he has kind of the same body frame as like a, a Cortland, you know, Tim, they're all kind of the same. So, uh, we can look at it as hey, we got a big receiving core, right? They're guys that can block that are physical, that are definitely, um, going, going to play hard. So, uh, he's a solid receiver and I think he's kind of, um, he, he's kind of the guy kind of replacing Tim really. Cause you know, they don't really know what they're going to get from Tim. Yep. But with uh, with Josh Reynolds, you know that um, he's been solid uh, being number three, kind of number two, three receiver uh, over his career. And um, uh, he's just um, he, he, he's been solid. Right. He yeah. just hadn't been able to get that be the future guy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's that kind of speaks to what you were saying about he's a guy who knows his role. Um, for uh -huh. me, looking at him and the type of player that he is, I see. Uh, I, I see that exact same thing. I see this signing mm -hmm. as Tim Patrick insurance, so to say. Shout right. out to Frankie Abbott for that. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it, same build, same type of mentality. Like he's very much a no block, no rock kind of guy. Uh, he's going to get nasty in the run game. He's going to be a pretty reliable receiver over the middle. I know a lot of fans saw his performance in the NFC Championship game and that crucial drop late. Yeah. He dropped three passes last year. Let's give him a break. Everybody drops one yeah. once in a while. Um, it just so happened that that was the one that was on the biggest stage. Um, he's very like right. just very consistent guy over the middle. Good contested catch rate guy. 
So I, I think that all in all, this is a signing that is a, this is a Sean Payton signing. This is, this is him saying our receiving, our receiving core is going to look completely different next season. Um, it's going to be more of the traditional, we're going to run, the, we're going to run the rock. Our receivers are going to block on the edges and yeah. we're going to pound the ball all game long um, and then hit those intermediate. So I, th- yeah. I think this is a good signing, Chris. I think it's cost effective. Um, as far as his role in this offense now, and we also have to look at who else is in this room. You mentioned Cortland Sutton. He could still very yeah. much be a trade target. Um, you mentioned Tim Patrick. Who knows what is going to happen with him? Marvin Rims is going into year two. Brandon Johnson is kind of coming back. Jalen Virgil's coming off of injury. So in the looks of this whole unit right now, there's still a lot of question marks. Do you see, and we'll talk about trades. Speaking of trades, the Jets just traded for Hassan Reddick while we're- Oh, man. That's massive. Um so we'll talk about trades in a little bit, especially with Cortland. But if one of those two guys is either traded or is unable to go at 100%, and I'm talking about Court and Tim Patrick, do you see Josh Reynolds kind of essentially being thrust into that wide receiver one? Or, or should we yeah. say just X role in Sean yeah. Payton's offense? Yeah. I think um, the way he's looking at it is, uh, probably 12 personnel. He'll probably have Mims or, or Cortland or probably Tim or Cortland. And um, when they go through receivers, you keep Tim and Cortland outside and you probably move Mims inside. So I'll probably see Reynolds, Cortland, and um, Tim Patrick kind of playing, you know, uh, rotating at those spots, you know, because this is probably Cortland's last year. If we just if m- more yeah. than likely, yeah. uh, you know, uh, we could probably see this as his last year. So I can see those three kind of guys rotating on the outside. Um, we still got some a lot of a lot of youthful receivers that played well last year. Um, so uh, we got a lot of receivers. I think it's going to be a great competition. Um, and uh, we'll see who's going to shake out. But we got to figure out a way to get Mims um, involved more. He's such a playmaker. Yeah. Uh, and, his, I mean, we've seen his average yards per catch. I mean, it's yeah. – Dan Mayer, 19, 20 yards per catch, you know. So we got to get this guy the ball. And um, that he should be the focal point, mm-hmm. right? But it's great to have – but when, when it's time to get in the dirty, it's time to block, red zone, you know, yeah. type situations, you got to have a Josh Reynolds because yeah. um, or a Cortland. Because Josh Reynolds, what the Lions did with him is they took advantage of him in short yardage situations, mm-hmm. used the play action, lined this guy up as tight end sometimes, and yeah. and kind of snuck him out the backfield, different things like that. But that's if yeah. people really, if they're watching in tune of of how they kind of use this guy. Yeah. So um, that he he does have a role in a system, and I think he he'll be a, that's a solid pickup. I think that's a good pickup. Yeah, fifty seven point one percent contested catch rate last year, nine point four percent drop rate, the highest of his career last year. I think we can count that as an anomaly. Um, played. Mm-hmm. much like many more snaps though that's the thing is the uptick yeah. in snaps does equate to the slight uptick in drops which is totally mm-hmm. fine uh 212 snaps out of the slot 396 snaps out wide um so pretty good uh distribution of using him yeah. inside and outside uh but big physical guy effort in the effort in the run blocking game and that's the yeah. that's the thing that for me looking at this receiving group and looking at the guys that we've had over the last few years and versus now what we have Cortland is a very very capable run blocking receiver he gives effort tim yeah. very very capable gives effort reynolds capable effort that's the theme yeah. here big capable and effort guys. I think that this could be a, a really good signing for Sean Payton and the Broncos for what they want to do with their offensive identity. Still yeah. which to be seen though. So they signed Josh Reynolds kind of been quiet through free agency. We talked about that in our last yeah. episode, Chris. Um, but now looking past free agency and going into the draft, 
what do you yeah. what do you see the team needs for the Broncos right now? Obviously, quarterback's number one, but outside of quarterback, what do you see the biggest team need being for the Broncos right now? Let's say the yeah. draft is tomorrow. Quarterbacks off the board. What position are you targeting? Yeah, uh, corner. You know, uh, I think not having a vet experience or any really other than Mathis having a little experience uh, at the number yeah. two corner um, opposite of Pat Sertan. Um, I think that's a big issue, a big um, key position on the defense. You know, he's a starter. That's pretty much a starter. Even though he's starting up in the past certain, he's a starter in the defense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can't – and in, the, in today's NFL, you can't hide corners, right, anymore. No. No. Eventually, they're going to find you, right? <laughs> so, um, uh, <laughs> so you, we got to get <laughs> another corner. Find you somewhere. Yeah, and we got to get one more deep tackle, you know. I think we did a – you know, we kind of shared up more consistency with the linebacker position and replacing Josie, right? But we haven't really uh, beefed up the D-line front yet um, like I wanted to. And um, uh, other than picking up uh, my, my dog from the Saints, that was a good yeah, pickup. Welcome. But I still think we still need one more and yeah. uh, being able to just just to compete with the rest of the division and um, in the AFC because, you know, it's going to be loaded next next year. Yeah, we've seen some reports. Uh, not sure how reliable they are, but we have seen some reports about Steven Nelson potentially being yeah. linked to the Broncos. Uh, veteran guy spent a few years in Kansas City, Pittsburgh. Uh, Philly and, and these last two years in Houston. Uh, what do you what do you think about that? Yeah. Do you think Steven Nelson would be you know a, like does that move the needle for you at corner uh, cornerback opposite Pat Sertan? Uh, no, I think they if if they might as well bring me in if they're gonna bring Steve Nelson in, you know, <laughs> bring me back, you know, I can call Chris. I can play better or do better than him, I think. But uh, I think he had a solid. He's been solid, you know. He's had a yeah. solid career. And uh, he didn't play bad for Houston. Uh, so um, um, I wouldn't see it as a big issue, you know. But um, I think you might as well get your young guys some some um, some experience. We still haven't seen what Ma Moss can do. We still, yeah. you know, Mathis has the ability, but he just has to get it it's mentally right. He yeah. just has to get his mental right, his technique right. Uh, come on, if you got the message, man, come on out here, Mathis. Come to boot camp, man. I'll get you right. Yeah. Man. Come on out here, man. But uh, uh, it's just little things like that, right at yeah. corner. And uh, I, I, I don't think Nelson is a bad corner. Uh, but do I think he moves the needle to the defense? No, I don't. Yeah. Uh, could it be probably maybe he ran him and Vance have a relationship? You know, maybe him and Jim Leonard. You never yeah, know. True. So um, yeah, uh, Jim. You know, I don't think anybody. I don't know how many guys are still playing that Jim played with. You know, yeah, <laughs> I might yeah. probably Vaughn. Mine might be the only <laughs> one, you know, but uh, uh, it's it's gonna be interesting to see. They need somebody back there. It would be good for yeah. them to get a veteran uh, yeah. to help teach these young guys. Even Pat, you know, Pat still hasn't yeah really learned everything in the NFL yet either. So no. um, uh, I think it would be good for them to help get them another vet for sure. So in our last episode, um, we did talk about some cornerbacks on the free agent market. And one of them did get signed. The one that we really, really wanted uh, got signed to the Niners. Uh, that yes. one, that one hurt. But as far as you know, looking at the guys that are on the roster right now, Moss. I mean, you said it. We don't know what we have yet. Mathis has had a little bit of experience as a starter. From your perspective, and, and I'm really, really curious on this. From your perspective, when you watch Mathis. What's like, what's the one thing to you that pops off on the screen that like, you're like, man, if you just had X, Y, Z, you could be so much like, is it technique? Is it confidence? Is it like size? Yeah. Like what, what do you see when you watch Damari Mathis yeah. that like kind of keeps him away from that starting corner territory? Yeah. Uh, He kind of plays like he doesn't want to mess up. Right, he's like he's on a short leash, kind of careful. You, yeah, plain scared. He's not really, yeah, he's not really letting loose. You know mm -hmm. how he can really play, and he has a technique. He has the ability. He's fast. He can jump. He can, you know, he has all that, right? But he he does have some bonehead plays that he'll make in a game, which that happens as a young corner. Um, um, so we do know that can happen. 
But usually when you have those issues, if you if you if you're a solid and a good NFL corner, you'll still make a play or two. Be like, okay, yeah. he he get he gets beat on this, but okay, you're not gonna mess with him on this because he's gonna pick that off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or he's gonna yeah. this ain't gonna happen, right? Yeah. So I haven't seen him answer the bell on that, right? Yeah. It's kind of been just do whatever you want, and mm-hmm. um, he has to stop the bleeding. At some point in a game, yeah, you gotta kind of. You got to stop the bleeding and be like, no, you're not going to catch no more of these. I'm shutting yeah. this down. And, you know, I'm standing on this island over here. And that's what he needs, right? He needs that confidence. He needs to, he needs to build himself up in that way. And con- and corner, you can you can kill yourself mentally. Yeah, oh, right? yeah. Big time. And, and stay, keep yourself – keep your own self in a doghouse, right? Not yeah. even the coach – Right, uh, putting you in the dog, you putting yourself in there mentally, right? Yeah. It's a you got to be able to move to the next play. Understand that you're playing across uh, all pro corner, right? Yeah. And you got to stand Pressure. up on business. Yeah, you like I've been in that situation <laughs> yeah. as a young corner and had to play opposite against uh, a hall of, opposite a hall of fame corner, right? Or even right. being a freshman, two freshmen in college, starting opposite of um, a senior, you know, all American corner into lead. Right. So I've had to do that before as a young corner. So he just has to be able to you got to be able to stand up and be like, I'm going to make plays over here, too. You know, Mm -hmm. and he hasn't done that yet. And hopefully he can pick that up this season. That's a great point, man. Like and I think about, too, I think back to like when Roby joined the team and, you know, you and Tlaib are there. And and I mean, he's a rookie. He's coming out of Ohio State, of course, like very good coaching, but like still not perfect. And that is a lot of pressure. And, and those are, you have to be able to make every opportunity count. Like you cannot let plays eat you up like that over and over. I'm looking at Damari Mathis from 2022 to 2023. And like, like what happened? Like, honestly, it, it was, I mean, he's still yeah. like six pass breakups in 2022. He was allowing a uh, 96.7 passer rating when thrown to. And like 70% in 2022, 72% in 2023 uh, allowed reception percentage. But man, like his his grading was a lot higher, nearly 30 points higher and just completely dropped off. And his snaps just went down and down and down. I mean, after the after that first Kansas City game, he never got more than nine snaps a game. And that that's yeah. that's rough. He didn't even play from week. 13 uh or from week 14 to week 16 he didn't even play didn't even see the field no. so you talking about the confidence and and getting out of the doghouse like that's what uh that's what he needs to fix for sure yeah. um last thing we'll talk about here chris sean payton you get my message coach. yeah yeah i got you yeah i got it <laughs> Yeah, last last thing we'll talk about here, Chris. Um, Sean Payton talking at the coaches' meeting. They asked him if it was likely if he would be trading up for a quarterback in this class, and he said it's very realistic. Mm-hmm. Do you like that plan? What do you think? And yeah. ESPN put out a trade that was three first round picks to trade up to Arizona to get to four to take JJ McCarthy. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Um. It depends on how much we give up. You know, if we give up probably two first rounders, I'll be okay with that. Three, we can't do that, right? That'll just be um, eliminating all, all the talent that's coming up these next couple of years. And I'm pretty sure next year's draft is going to be good too. You yeah, know, um, JJ McCarthy, I think is going to be a good quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. Um, put it, pairing him up with a Sean Payton, they could, they could definitely make some make some money, make some noise. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't be bad with that. You know, I yeah. think. Um, we have not been aggressive team in the past in getting a quarterback, and uh, I think it's to time develop. to be aggressive. Yeah, or or yeah. had any patience with the quarterback? Yeah, because I mean the Russ Paxton, situation was weird. I, I could say we kind of gave up on Pat. Paxton had all the talent in the world. Yeah, right. But he just didn't get the system wasn't right. The coaches wasn't fitting them right. Yeah. It you have it, it takes a mix of everything for it to work. Yeah. We're, right. we're gonna have we're gonna have to go in depth on that in an in a yeah year. oh yeah yeah one day we'll have to talk about that right yeah. I seen it firsthand you know but yeah 
Um, uh, I think with JJ will be a great piece to come in Denver. He'll be huge. Uh, he's a championship pedigree. We got to have somebody that can go against Patrick Mahomes. Yep. If that's their guy, I would say let's go be aggressive and let's go get him. You heard it I'm here with first. It. Be aggressive. Go get him. If Peyton likes him, he likes him. We'll see. Uh, that's going to do it for us for now. We'll be back soon with some more talk about quarterbacks, draft, free agency. Uh, we're going to be here. Uh, make sure that you follow this show on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. Make sure that you follow us on Twitter at Chris Harris Jr., at Patrick Coyote, at Believe Network. Go follow the YouTube and make sure that you subscribe there. We will see you next time.